Evangelistic Impact This message is interpreted and broadcast by Word of Inspiration International Radio from Bukaramanga, Colombia, which is an outreach of the worldwide missionary movement. Let's listen to our speaker, the founder of the worldwide missionary movement, Reverend Wisem Ortiz, through the voice of our interpreter. After 900 years of the people of Israel possessing their land, in the times of the prophet Jeremiah, God uses him to warn the two southern tribes, Judah and Benjamin, that if they did not depart from idolatry and sin, they would be taken captive into Babylon. The ten northern tribes had already been taken captive to Assyria. God spoke to the two southern tribes by the mouth of Jeremiah, saying, And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. Jeremiah 25.12 And that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you, in causing you to return to this place. Jeremiah 29.10 Now, the seventy years of captivity were fulfilled, and the prophet Daniel, who was a prophet in the captivity, wanting to know about the future of his people, and which was that good word that God had for his people, writes in the chapter 9 of his book. I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish seventy years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done weakly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Daniel 9, 2-5 Here is a wonderful prayer of confession and repentance that Daniel concludes, saying, Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O my God, incline thine ear and hear upon thine eyes, and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Daniel 9, 17-19 In the face of this prayer, so sincere and profound and so intense, the answer came from God. The prophet Daniel continues relating, And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee for thou art greatly beloved. 
Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to zeal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem into the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in the troublous times. And after three scores and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the word desolation are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that the termin shall be poured upon the desolate. Daniel 9, 20-27 Before referring to these seventy weeks announced to Daniel by the angel Gabriel, as a prophetic and historic synopsis of the future of the people of Israel, it is very important to mention a historical reality in all of the previous dealings of God with Israel. These of seventy weeks are determined upon thy people would seem to be something new, something strange in the dealings of God with Israel, but it is marvelous admirable and harmonious in that God has always dealt with Israel based upon periods of time, of seventy weeks of years, that is, of four hundred and ninety years. Besides, in those periods of seventy weeks of years, God never counted the time when Israel was in captivity or out of its land or subdued by Gentiles' powers. Let's notice that the seventy weeks of Daniel are not unique in the dealings and plans of God with Israel. From the calling of Abraham to the exodus of Egypt, seventy weeks of years elapsed, that is, four hundred and ninety years, not counting the fifteen years in which Hagar, the slave, and her son Ishmael dominated in the home of Abraham. God did not count those years of Gentile domination. From the exodus of Egypt to the dedication of the Temple of Solomon, seventy weeks of years, that is, four hundred and ninety years, elapsed, not counting the one hundred and thirty one years of Gentile domination that Israel suffered in the times of the judges. God did not count those years. From the dedication of the Temple of Solomon to the conclusion of the Babylonian captivity, seventy weeks of years elapsed, that is, for a hundred and ninety years, without counting the seventy years they were captive in Babylon. God did not count those years. And it is at this point in the history of the people of Israel, when the captivity in Babylon is fulfilled, that Daniel inquires of God, about the future of his people. God, consistent in his dealing with Israel in the past, that is, on the basis of seventy weeks of years, four hundred and ninety years, answers Daniel, seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most Holy. Daniel 9.24 These seventy weeks are determined upon the people of Israel and upon the city of Jerusalem. In other words, they only have to do with Israel and Jerusalem. 
they have nothing to do with the church. Notice that all of the objectives to be achieved in the fulfilling of the 70 weeks are connected to Israel and Jerusalem. First, to end the transgression of Israel in relation to their Messiah. Second, to put an end to the sins of Israel because of the unbelief and rejection of Christ, their Messiah. Third, to make reconciliation for the iniquity of Israel as a nation that will accept Christ as their Messiah and the Redeemer. Fourth, to bring in the everlasting righteousness to Israel who will be justified by their faith in Christ. Fifth, to seal up the vision and the prophecy for with the presence of the Messiah the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. And sixth, to anoint the most holy, that is, the cleaning and restoring of the holy of holies, desecrate and ravaged by the Antichrist. In the same message of the angel to Daniel, these seventy weeks are divided into three periods of time. The first division is the first seven weeks, or forty-nine years. The second division is the following sixty-two weeks or 434 years. And the third division is the final week, which is the final seven years that completes the 490 years. At the same time, these divisions are separated in themselves by important events. The first seven weeks of years begin with the decree of Artaxerxes in the month of Nisan, April. 445 years before Christ to rebuild the walls and the city of Jerusalem. History proves that this work of reconstruction under Nehemiah lasted exactly seven weeks of years, or 49 years. The following 62 weeks begin at the end of the reconstruction of Jerusalem and continue until the death of Christ, exactly 62 weeks of years, or 434 years. Christ was rejected by Israel as their Messiah, and until today Israel as a nation still rejects him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. John 1, 11. Because of the incredulity of Israel, God visited the Gentiles to gather from them a people for his name, and for this reason, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 1.12 The clock of the direct dealings of God with Israel was detained at the death of Christ, that is, at the conclusion of 69 weeks of years, or 483 years. As in times past, now, God does not count to the time of the Gentiles' supremacy. Since the death of Christ, and due to Israel's rejection of Christ, the time is not being counted concerning the dealings of God with Israel, for God is visiting the Gentiles to take from them a people for his name. The time has stopped concerning the direct dealings of God with Israel, and a week of years is yet to be fulfilled the seventieth week of Daniel's prophecy, seven years during which God will deal directly with Israel and all of God's plans concerning Israel and Jerusalem will be consummated. And finally, Israel will recognize and accept Christ as their Messiah. As long as God is taking, saving people from amidst the Gentiles, as long as the Church of Jesus Christ is present in the whole world, God will not turn to Israel as a nation. The Church has to go up to heaven. The raising up of the Church has to occur. The dead in Christ have to rise first. And then we which are alive have to be transformed and caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 through 17. The Apostle James, speaking about the time when God finishes taking a people for his name from among the Gentiles, says, After this I will return, 
and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Acts 15, 16. The Apostle Paul also says, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Romans 11, 26, 27. When the church is taken up, which should be any moment, the seventieth week of the prophecy of Daniel begins. The seven years of the government of the Antichrist, when Israel is salary tried, especially in the last three years and a half. Then, at the end of that week, they will be gloriously delivered. For immediately after their tribulation, the sign of the Son of Man shall appear, and they will see him coming in the clouds with power and great glory, and his feet shall stand upon the mountain of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. Matthew 24, 29, Zechariah 14, 4. Just as the 69 previous weeks, this week number 70 is determined upon the people of Israel, upon the people, and upon the city of Jerusalem. All these weeks, neither the 69 already fulfilled, nor the 70th that is still to be fulfilled, having anything to do with the church, they have to do with Israel. As a matter of fact, week number 70 will not be fulfilled while the church is in the world. So the judgments and the great trials of the 70th week will fall upon the incredulous Israel and upon the rebellious world. God will take the church out of the world just as he took Enoch out of the world before pouring out the judgment of the flood. Just as he delivered Lot from the fire and the destruction of Sodom, just as Daniel was absent from the fiery furnace, thus also will the Lord deliver his church from the judgment of the great tribulation, the seventieth week that is fast approaching. The Lord himself says, I will come again and will receive you into myself. John 14, 3. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding in the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Matthew 24, 40, 41. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Matthew 25, 10-12 Some say that the church will pass through the great tribulation, but it is evident that those Christians who are not ready for the taking up of the church will have to pass through the great tribulation. For one, those who are ready will be taken up, and the others, those who are not ready will be left behind. Five virgins went into the marriage. Five were left outside. Are you prepared living in holiness? Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord come. Matthew twenty four forty two. In this same instance you can repent him from your sins, receive Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Amen. If this message was a blessing for you, write us at word at inspiration at hotmail.com Visit our website www.imiw.org or call us at 5776422886. God bless you.